Imagine that you are in your clinic doing a composite restoration. The cavity is large, you are placing the 5th 2mm increment and now curing it. This traditional technique of composite placement is obviously time consuming. We have to place the composite in the layers of 2mm and each layer has to be cured before placing the next one. This is done because the curing light cannot penetrate beyond that and also Curing in increments reduces the overall polymerization shrinkage. Apart from being time consuming if it is not carried out effectively, for example, if we increase the thickness of one of the layers unknowingly, the resin at the base of the layer may remain uncured or partially cured. Such areas of uncured or partially cured composite resin between layers will make the restoration very weak. This will also prevent adequate sealing of the restoration and cause post-operative sensitivity and early failure of the restoration. So in order to simplify and speed up the placement of large posterior composites, manufacturers have produced a range of materials which can be placed in thicker increments of 4 to 5 mm which are known as bulk fill composites. These composites are recommended for use primarily in classes 1 and 2 cavity preparations and they can be used in other classes of tooth preparations as well as long as the shade of the composite matches the tooth. So a question should come in your mind, as we are curing the composite in bulk, will there be a great deal of polymerization shrinkage? In these composites, to control the polymerization shrinkage, some special components are added which are supposed to regulate the polymerization reaction and in this way reduce shrinkage stress. For example, some manufacturers use addition fragmentation monomer. What it does is, during polymerization, the central group can fragment to relieve stress. The fragments can then repolymerize later when there is lower stress. The other component which is added to reduce the polymerization shrinkage is aromatic urethane dimethacrylate. Traditional dimethacrylate monomers are smaller in size. This one is larger than the monomer in traditional dimethacrylates. So it limits the number of shrinkage zones. This helps in reducing the amount of shrinkage and stress that occurs during polymerization. Then there are special fillers with low elastic modulus, meaning they are not stiff, so they absorb the polymerization stress. Think about stress relief balls to remember this one. Now as we know, this material can be placed in bulk. But how can the curing light penetrate this much thickness of material? Manufacturers have attempted to increase the depth of cure by a variety of methods like reducing the filler content, increasing filler particle size and the use of additional photo initiators. Reducing the filler content and increasing the filler size reduces the amount of scatter at the resin filler interface and so more light can pass through which can activate the photo initiator. This ability of allowing light to pass through is known as translucency. So this material has high translucency. This is the reason we can cure the material in bulk. Some manufacturers use additional photo initiators. For example, a highly reactive photo initiator called ivocerin is used in some materials. This photo initiator allows the material to be polymerized in larger increments when compared to standard photo initiators such as camphor quinone. Now let's talk about the available types. They can be categorized into high viscosity or low viscosity, light cured or dual cured. We are going to talk about the four main types here. The high viscosity bulk fill composites include greater amount of filler particles compared to low viscosity bulk fill composites. All of the bulk fill restorative materials can be capped with conventional composites if you want to improve their aesthetics or physical characteristics. In this image, you can see the clinical application of this bulk fill composite in 4 mm layers. In the video on flowable composites, we discussed how we can place this material as a cavity liner under bulk fill composites, right? Because the flowable material is more elastic, so it acts as a stress absorbing layer. 
and it helps in decreasing polymerization shrinkage. Next we have the bulk fill base which is also known as flowable bulk fill composite. They have a low viscosity and they are light cured. They are called as bulk fill bases as they always require a conventional layer of resin based composite to cap the restoration because this material has lower filler content. Always remember this basic association. Whenever we say a composite is flowable, it means it has less viscosity, which is because of lower filler content. And lower filler content means the material has low strength. So this material has reduced wear resistance and hardness properties. That's why we need a layer of conventional composite material to cap it. In this image, you can see how a bulk fill base composite can be used along with conventional composite to efficiently restore large cavities. First, 1 mm of base is applied using this material and then it is applied in 4 mm increments. The marginal ridge and the occlusal capping layer is of conventional composite because it is stronger. Next, we have a new material the sonic activated bulk fill composite. This is a high viscosity bulk fill composite which becomes low viscosity with the use of sonic vibration. So the high viscosity material becomes flowable when we apply sonic energy. How does it work? This material has high filler volume which is why it has high viscosity. High viscosity means it is less flowable but it is combined with modifiers that are activated by sonic energy. The sonic energy is produced by a specially designated hand face to reduce the viscosity of the material during placement. So it can be applied into the cavity as a flowable composite. And then after application it returns to a more viscous state that can be carved or molded. So can you think why they have developed a material like this? You see when the material becomes flowable during application, it can adapt to the cavity walls in a better way. This image shows how the material can be applied. It is applied in 5 mm layers. In this way, we can efficiently restore large access cavities after completion of root canal treatment. The last one here is Dual Cure Bulk Fill Composite. Dual cure means a combination of both chemical and light cure technology. The surface of the restoration can be light cured and then polishing and finishing can be done. The full depth of restoration will be chemically cured within 3 minutes. So as you can see here, this material is suitable for bulk filling cavities of any depth in a single increment. Recently, a new experimental short fiber reinforced flowable resin composite was introduced as a restorative material. This material can be used as dentin replacing material in high stress bearing areas, especially in large cavities of vital and non-vital posterior teeth. It is fiber reinforced means it consists of a combination of a resin matrix, randomly oriented glass microfibers and inorganic selenated particulate fillers. Because of addition of these microfibers, this material has superior fracture toughness and flexural properties when compared to conventional resin composites. Fibers have the ability to deflect crack propagation. Additionally, mechanical stresses acting on the restoration get transferred from polymer matrix to fibers. This is how it reinforces the restoration. According to a study, the new short fiber reinforced flowable resin composite revealed improved fracture toughness compared with the flowable bulk fill resin composites. Also, the addition of microfibers did not affect the flowability of the material. This means that we can use this material in high stress bearing areas.